All right, everybody, it's time for a quick overview on this guitar I just finished up. This began its life as an original, I believe, 2002 Tom DeLonge Strat. It came to me with a black finish that was really jacked up, for lack of a better word. The paint was just completely flaking off and... Um, it just seemed like a fun project to repaint. And after some decision making, um, decided to just go with an entirely different neck, which I already had. This is a Mr. G custom neck. This guy, I, I found him on eBay a little while ago and I've used his necks a couple times and he uses Fender licensed parts. So it could be like a Mighty Might or an all parts neck or something like that. Um, he does all the relicking himself and adds, you know, the logo and all that. And they're just awesome necks. I've, like I said, I've used them a couple times now and I'm really pleased with them. They feel really great and look just as great. So I found one, um, that was a 69 spec, um, a while ago and it was on my red strat for a while and figured why not switch the original Tom DeLonge neck onto that one? Um, because, you know, it just seemed like a better fit on that guitar anyway. Put the Relic neck on this one and did a really fun Relic finish on here. Um, I've been really getting into doing like the Relic finishes um, last couple of years. I, I, it takes a little bit of pressure off of me because the finish doesn't have to be perfect and it's hard for me to do a perfect finish. I've tried it a couple times and it's just... It's just torture. Um, anybody that can do it well, you know, my hat's off to them. Um, so yeah, the, the neck is different. It, it's not the original Tom neck anymore, but it's great. It's got like a, you know, your typical C-shaped neck. Um, frets are medium, I believe, but they play great. They're definitely not small or anything like that. Um, I believe these are clues and tuners. If they're not clues, then they're clues in style. I, f I forget, but they they work great. Um, the body is obviously the original body. Um, the blue that I painted it, I've gotten a few questions on that. It's actually a Rust-Oleum color called Sail Blue that I found a while ago. I actually used it on that plaid Jazzmaster that I um, that I did a little while ago. That was like the main dark blue on that guitar, and then I did. The racing stripe because I just love racing stripes. Um, I did a new pick guard just because I felt like it was going to be a nicer match for the overall guitar um, than the pearl pick guard. Still has the original bridge invader in there, original knob, original bridge, and uh, input jack plate. Um, same electronics. I hadn't switched any of that out. Didn't need to. Um, I, I did switch out the neck plate, actually, um, I went for something a little bit more classic and, uh, just standard looking, a little bit more relict. Um, and I don't know, I, I have it set up for E flat right now. It's playing really, really nicely. And I just wanted to do a quick little overview video before I sent it off. One thing I did do is I ordered some new um, intonation, or not intonation, uh, bridge height screws on here because on this original Tom DeLonge bridge, it's an import bridge, and they don't, I, don't, I don't believe they even make this bridge anymore. That's why the new Fender Tom DeLongs come with the American hardtail bridge, with they, which they don't use super often, but they do still use occasionally on like a Cabernita Telecaster or like those Fender lead guitars, stuff like that. Um, that bridge I much prefer, but I figured I'd just stick with the original one. Um, but one thing that they just always did on those is they use the same size um, height screws on all of them. And you'll notice that, especially on like something with a, a, a curved fretboard radius, um, the strings on the edges are lower. You don't have to have them as high as say like the middle 
uh, the middle uh, strings there. So those screws, the little set screws, they stick out and they're really uncomfortable to play, especially if you're doing like palm muting or anything like that. And I've actually seen people just straight up cut their hand open on those if they're really strumming hard. So I changed those out for some shorter ones. Um, and it, it makes a world of difference really. Um, but I think, I think that's about it. Um, this is not a poly finish. Um, I did all the, uh, the relicking with mostly with a razor blade. That's usually what I do. Um, I do my best to try to make it look real and, you know, I, I'm pretty happy with this one overall. Um, yeah. I think it's I think it's a cool guitar. I love the color. I think it turned out really nicely, and um, I actually intended on filming the entire process, but something just slipped my mind once I started painting, and that was mostly because when I got the guitar, it was around the turn of the new year, and I was able to remove the finish without problems, but. I really had to wait a while before I had uh, appropriate weather to actually paint. And by that point, it was like late March, early April or something. I, I forget exactly. But um, at that point, I had forgotten, you know, how I had been filming every little part of this. So I do have some footage of me, uh, like, taking the finish off and dismantling it. I might do something with that footage. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but either way, I'm going to stop talking now, show off the guitar a little bit, and uh, let me know what you think. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm quite pleased. Another project is done. I didn't mess it up, as far as I can tell. Um, and yeah, just, yeah, that's great. I really like it. I, there's just something about a Tom DeLonge Strat, whether it is modeled after something he actually did use or even something like this that is just kind of its own vibe. I think it turns out really cool. So, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys soon, I'm sure, because I'm always here. i got nothing better to do. Later.